If you store information in password-protected documents, you should know how important it is to pick a strong password. Today, we'll be cracking Microsoft Word documents on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. In order to check out how to crack password-protected documents, we're going to follow along with the Nullbyte article written by DRD. Now, this is a really cool guide to how you can use a Python program to extract the hash that's basically the key to unlocking a protected file. Once we have that, we can run it through a program called John, which is able to basically search for weak passwords by using a password list that we can find online. Today, I provided a locked file, which I put on my GitHub page, and you can follow along by downloading it and attempting to crack it yourself. Now, in order to do this, you'll need a Linux system, which can either be a virtual machine or installed on your hard drive, as I've done on this computer, and it can be either Kali Linux or Debian. It doesn't really matter. You can even use Ubuntu, uh, but I do recommend having a Linux system because this would be pretty tricky on Mac OS or on a Windows computer. Once you have that ready to go, you can check out the Nullbyte article written by DRD if you need any troubleshooting guides. But aside from that, you should be ready to go. To get started cracking password protected documents, we're going to follow this excellent Nullbyte article written by DRD. Now we're going to go about this in two different ways. We're going to first use a tool to extract the hash, and then we'll use two different tools to actually, actually crack it. Now the first step will be to get the program that's going to extract the hash from the dummy file. And for this, we can use the dummy file that's provided on the Nullbyte article so that we know that we're going to get a positive result when we guess the right password. Now you can download it right here by clicking on the link, and I've gone ahead and downloaded it also to this folder to keep everything organized, and I recommend you create a folder to keep all these things as well. Now what we're going to need is first the dummy file to crack, then we'll need to extract the hash and save that to a file, and next, we'll need a password list, which if you're using Kali Linux, we're going to use the built-in password list that is meant for Nmap. However, if you don't have a password list, you can just go ahead and Google search this. I recommend you look for the ones on GitHub, and you'll find a variety of different password lists that you can substitute. Uh, for this particular one, it doesn't need to be very long, because the password, not to uh, spoil it, is password123. But provided our password list, uh, our password is on this password list, we should be able to get a positive result, thus showing that if we're able to intercept this document and had enough time and processing power, we should be able to crack virtually any password, provided we're willing to put the work into it. So first, we'll need to get this Python program that's going to extract the hash from uh, the program. Uh, sorry, from the dummy file. So now that we have the dummy file, we can go into a terminal window, and we'll. Uh, I'll start out by going to my desktop. I'm going to make a fi uh, file, sorry, I'm going to make a folder called uh, Cracking for Johnny. And I've already made this, so I'm going to cd into it. And here we're going to have a couple different things. First, we'll have office to johnpy Now that's the program that we just downloaded. And this is going to be responsible for getting the hash from the dummy doc, uh, dot x. Now, all right, first I'm going to go ahead and remove the hash.txt just so we're not messing anything up. And now let's go ahead and run this program according to the way the article says to. So we'll just go ahead and basically copy this. And what we're doing is redirecting the output from uh, dummy.doc being put through office to john.py into this new file called, uh, called hash.txt. So let's go ahead and paste this in. And when we type ls again, we can see there's hash.txt. And if we type cat hash.txt, we can see that we've successfully extracted the hash, which actually contains some additional information. Here we can see that this was created using an Office 2007 version, and that's important because it will help uh, Hashcat actually understand how we're supposed to crack this. Now that we have this text file, our next step is going to be to choose which method of cracking we want to go with. 
and I've created two bash files here in order to automate the process a little bit, but I'm going to unpack them a little bit so we can see exactly what they do and what our options are. Now the first tool we're going to look at is John. So if I type cat johncrack.sh, we can see what this is actually going to do. So we're going to call John and then we're going to use the built-in word list for nmap, of which this is the file path. But this is the part where you would want to substitute, substitute in a word list you downloaded if this wasn't available. Let's say you're using Ubuntu and this isn't uh, installed by default. Next, you'll just provide the hash that we want to crack, in this case hash.txt, and we'll go ahead and run this and let's see if we can get a positive result. Here we go. All right, this session was completed and we can see the password was successfully extracted, password123. So the second attack that we can use, oops, the second attack that we can use is using hashcat instead. So if I type cat hashcat, which is fun, oops, dot sh, you can see that we're calling hashcat, we're setting the mode, and then after that, we are essentially just using the cracked password dot text, the uh, hash dot text, and the user slash shared slash word lost at uh, nmap.list as the arguments that we're supplying to the Hashcat script. Now, if we go back to the main article, you can see that this is a little bit more complicated than the previous one, but essentially we're just passing a couple variables. Um, in this case, we're ignoring any usernames in the hash file. We are uh, setting the output to crack.txt with the O flag, and then we're using the attack A flag as the uh, attack, which is just the default straight attack of zero. So since we have all these things already set in our bash file, we're just gonna go ahead and run bash hashcat.sh. And this should start the attack and we, after a little bit, should see some sort of result from our cracking attempt. Now this process will go ahead and continue as the dictionary cache is built and we can press S for status. And there we go. Once we finish this, we can type ls again and we should now see a new file called crackedpass.txt. So if we cat crackedpass.txt, we can see that we have the original hash and then at the very end after the colon, we have the successfully cracked password. And that is how you can use both of these programs to successfully crack the hash that is extracted from a MS or other word protected document. As we saw today, it is incredibly easy to brute force a file that uses a weak password. If you're storing any data or anything important in a Microsoft Word file and you're using a password that's weak, you should assume that anybody could open it in a matter of seconds. Now, of course, if you'd selected a super strong password, this just wouldn't work. So again, this goes back to the importance of always selecting a strong password anytime you're using some sort of hashing system or password management system like this. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you have any questions or you need help troubleshooting, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.